Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 54 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I want to take a moment and show you a cool technique I like to use. It's sort of like a bit of a hack, but it allows you to drag and drop really cool rhythmic chord patterns into your song. You can also use this for bass patterns as well. So over the last few videos, I've been talking mainly about the arpeggiator and the chord trigger. And at the end of the previous video, I showed you how you can use these two MIDI effects plugins in tandem, starting with the chord trigger to trigger some chords. And then you take those chords, bring them into the arpeggiator and the arpeggiator arpeggiates those chords. This time we're gonna use the grid mode along with latch mode to capture some really cool chord patterns and then we'll use the arpeggiator's drag and drop features to build out a rhythmic chord pattern for a song. So if you wanna follow along with me, this Logic project is available as a free download in the video description below. Before I get into the tutorial though, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Boombox.io is an awesome new music storage and audio file commenting tool that's perfect for musicians, producers, beat makers, and other collaborative music makers. With Boombox, you can upload your tracks. The site supports single file upload or batch upload. You can invite collaborators like other producers, other co-writers, bandmates, and others to comment on your tracks in the form of time-stamped feedback. If you want to check it out for yourself, head over to boombox.io where you can sign up for a free account today and get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so in this project, there's a chords track, a bass track, and a drum beat. I'm gonna start with the chords, and right now, both the chord trigger and the arpeggiator are bypassed. So I'm going to just turn on the chord trigger here, and here's what these chords inside of the chord trigger sound like. Now, one approach to this is you could just use the chord trigger and you could just play in the rhythm that you want, maybe something like this. But another way to do this is to load up the arpeggiator after your chord trigger. I'll go ahead and turn this on. I'm gonna switch this over to grid mode and I'm going to type in a rhythmic pattern that's similar to what I just played. So if I'm working with a 16th note, that ba bum bump is going to be three 16th notes. I'm gonna turn on three 16th notes. So ba bum bump. And then what you can do is for each step, you can make these a chord. Just click here to play the full chord instead of playing individual notes. And then what you can do is drag the length of each step just like so, to tie them together. So now if I just hold down the note A3, so I'm just gonna extend this out to a full 16 steps, and then I'll just continue building the pattern with any rhythm or chords I like. So once again, I'm just gonna do something like this. Let's tie all of these together. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm gonna bring this back a bit. Let's keep those notes separate there. And then another thing you can do with these notes is you can shorten the gate or the duration of the notes. So I'm gonna drag some of these in just like so, just to make them shorter, maybe a little bit more staccato. I'll make that one even more staccato and I'll even pull down the velocity a bit. And then I can add in some other steps if I want, just little accent steps. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. I'll pull down their velocities. And for these, I'm not going to make these full chords, I'll just make these individual notes. And I think I'll do the same thing here. Maybe I'll pull this one up just a little bit and pull out the gate a little bit more. Okay. 
Okay, so at this point, I could just record in those notes, but because the arpeggiator has this drag and drop chord feature, this makes it really convenient to simply trigger each note from the chord trigger and then just drag and drop in the pattern, especially if I wanna go in and maybe customize that pattern, it's gonna be a lot easier to customize it in MIDI than it is to customize it here and just you know work with the individual notes and let the arpeggiator do all of the work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on latch mode, put this in reset mode, and I'm doing this again because the drag and drop feature works best with latch mode, but you can totally use latch mode and grid mode at the same time. So all I'm gonna do is just play the first chord, drag and drop the MIDI in from here, then play the second chord, drag it in, and so forth and so on. And I'm not even gonna stop and talk, I'm just gonna do it all in one go. And you can trigger the chords from the chord trigger just by clicking on them. So this is really convenient if you don't have a MIDI controller, or you can just simply play the notes in on your MIDI controller as I'm going to do. And then when you're done, you just turn off the playback. Now, because we're going to be using the chords here, I do not need to have the arpeggiator or the chord trigger on, so I can bypass both of those plugins, and I can take these chords and I can edit them and arrange them in any way I like. So I think the second half of this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that up, and I'm gonna take the second half of this one and bring that back, just like so. I'm gonna move this one over, I'm gonna use this chord here, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste this over here. So let's see what that sounds like. And if you wanna view this all as one you know, MIDI region or one MIDI idea, just drag over all of them, hit J to join them, double click to open it up in the piano roll, and there we go. So I did that quicker than I could have ever done that, typing in each of those MIDI notes individually. That also requires additional MIDI editing, additional quantization, et cetera. So you can kind of do the same thing for bass instruments as well. So I've got a bass instrument pulled up here on this track. I have another chord trigger plugin and another arpeggiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the chord trigger, turn on the arpeggiator. If you are not trying to incorporate other notes than the, just the bass tone. You can actually omit the chord trigger and just do this completely within the arpeggiator for bass. But I've actually created um, three notes for each bass note. So if I turn on the arpeggiator, You can hear the arpeggiator arpeggiates each of those three notes for each trigger note. Now, I could use this as is and just use the drag and drop feature just like I did before, or I can incorporate grid mode once again. Now, these are not gonna be chords, so I'm not going to turn on any of these chord options down here, but I am gonna come up with my own uh, rhythmic pattern. Okay, so off screen, I made this pattern here using grid mode. And once again, I can either click on each of the triggers with playback on and with latch mode on, and then I can drag and drop in the bass pattern, or I can play this on my MIDI controller. So since I played it on my MIDI controller last time, I'll simply click to trigger each of these bass lines this time. So again, latch mode, reset, hit play.
So here I kind of split this up into two different chords. So I'll go ahead and pull that back. And then all of this just repeats again. But I've got one note right here that's on E. So now I've drag and dropped in all of those bass lines. Once again, I can bypass both of the MIDI effects plugins. There's no need to actually have those running. I'll join all of these together, double click to open it up in piano roll, and there's my bass line. Let's play at the velocities a bit. Let's pull those up quite a bit. The cool thing about this is because we've drag and dropped in the MIDI, we can further edit the bass line or the chords if we like. So for example, if I want all of these notes up top here to be dropped down an octave, I can drag over those, press shift option down, and now I've got a bass line that kind of stays more in the bass range. Okay, so that's how you can use the chord trigger and arpeggiator together along with the arpeggiator's drag and drop MIDI functions to create cool rhythmic chord and bass patterns. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.